In this video, we're going to talk about this dunder init.py. Now, dunder, as you know, is double underscore on either side of the name. And so it's a double underscore init un double underscore dot pi. I ran across this when I was doing Lambda on AWS. And I had uh, modules that I wrote that I wanted to import as packages. And all of a sudden, I couldn't find them. I couldn't get it to work until I added this strange empty file, this dunder init in every directory leading down to the code I wanted to import. Now, when you see this dunder init, think packages. But Will, what is a package? Well, it's a way of organizing your code so that you can import it easily using a structured naming system where each uh, folder becomes part of the name all the way down to the file name and then the individual function names within it. So first of all, you don't need this if you're just importing modules at the same level that you are currently. And so right now I created a greetings.py in the local directory. And I'm just going to, from greetings, import the Spanish function and call it. And it's going to say, hola, Will, and it's from the module. Now, next you have packages. So this is where you have a directory structure, and you want that directory structure to be part of the naming of the variables to kind of keep it from conflicting with other things. And so right here, I've got a package, my package. I give it that dunder init. I've got a subfolder, dunder init. And then the actual code is in greetings.py. So now I can say my package dot language dot greetings import German, and that won't conflict with stuff that's in the module in the uh, local directory. So here we're going to go. Hello, Will, from the package. Okay, now, if that wasn't confusing enough, Python decided to introduce namespaces in 3.3. Now, they have a very specific purpose, which is allowed, which it allows you to keep the same naming scheme, but have, saw, have files that are in different locations so that different teams could maintain it. Um, that's pretty esoteric. And it took me, I would say, an hour or two of playing around with this just to develop enough intuition to even be able to talk to you about it. Uh, so here I've got two places, Libraries 1 and Libraries 2. Both of them have language in there. And one has greetings and one has goodbyes. Now, if you had put an init pi down at the language level, it would stop after it found the first one and would say, this is language, there's no other you know, languages allowed, it would not be able to find goodbyes over here in the second path. And so, first of all, let's uh, import uh, sys, and if you look at it, our initial sys path doesn't have anything to do with these library directories. So then we're going to add them to the syspath so that it looks there for code. And you know here you can see they've been added on. Now, from both places, I can use language to import greetings and goodbyes, and it will find the code in both different directories and print it out. Now, because of this, you will, you will see people say, you don't need a NetPy. It's gone. Don't use it. This is not true. Namespaces are not equal to packages. They have different purposes. There are other things you can do with a NetPy that are not available in a namespace, like create global variables or shortcuts for importing stuff. And so, unless you're doing a namespace specifically, go ahead and use dunder init pi. Well, that's it. Please subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button down there. It helps me build an audience, and I'll see you in the next one.